Um, I'm Maya Ishku slash Sam Osa in drag at Sam Osa Drag Queen on Instagram. My pronouns are she, her, um, and I am the creator and director of Bristol Queer People of Colour Socials. Hi, I'm Skylar. My pronouns are Viva or he, they. I'm a barber. I'm Jackie Greenland. My pronouns are she, her. I'm an engineer, scientist, dancer and frustrated hairdresser. By day, I look after strategy for a large company, and by night, I teach queer dance in the city. I'm Loxley. My pronouns are he, him. I work at an all-inclusive hair shop in Bristol called Do. And I'm trans. trans. What advice do you have for educators um, in the classroom? They'd often be like, okay, all the girls go on this side and all the boys go on this side. It would just be easy, actually easier, to just like divide the class in a line and just do, this is one group, this is another group. Um, also a lot of sex education is very like binary as well. Um, and like male sex ed versus female sex ed. Um, like everyone needs to know about both. I think, yeah, you touched on a really great point of like not splitting things down into that binary, men here, women here, boys here, girls here kind of thing. I think that that just needs to go away, yeah. especially if you're going to include non-binary people, gender queer people, gender fluid people. Having, like, knowing that maybe your lecturer or your teacher is queer can also, like, help, you know, being like, yeah, having the representation there. Um, and as we all know, like, being openly queer is not easy, um, regardless of what profession you're in but just being able to know that, oh, my lecturer is also queer, so it, on some level they, they get it, yeah. you know? Um, I think that's, that's a huge, huge help. Also like letting people exist in their authentic selves, like the pronouns, letting them use their chosen name, stuff like that. These are still people to be taught. These are still people that are there to learn things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Treat them like that, don't treat them like something else. That's, yeah. you know. Just let them know that they're seen Mm -hmm. In one word, how do you feel when someone asks what your pronouns are? Elated, I think, is, is a good one. I had it recently at work. Uh, I finished the haircut for the person. We'd been vibing the entire time, like having great conversations. It was fantastic. And then at the end, he, he asked me my name and he asked me what my pronouns were. And I was just so happy. It, it like just capped my day. I was... I'd say seen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh, like... I could put a second one, it'd be respected, but you know. Yeah. It's usually curious. Mm. I, I, I'm someone who, I have to understand how the wor world works. Mm. That's, that's what I do. I look at the world, I look at what's broken, how can we fix it, all that kind of stuff. But particularly for me, um, in the demographics I move in, it's, I'm always curious as to, to, to why did you ask? Um, I feel good slash respected, that would be my word. Um, yeah, I think it's always great to ask what people's pronouns are. How can someone be a good ally? The big one is just listening, you know, and taking the time to like learn on their own instead of just like having everyone educate them, you know? But I know that there's a lot of misinformation <laughs> online as well. Yeah. So I'm happy to have the conversations, but I know some people can find it exhausting. I need them to be listening to arguments I make. Um, and then taking those arguments to other people. I need them to be advocates for us mm -hmm. in their daily life yeah. to all those people that we might not reach directly. Create that forward motion, create yeah. that snowball. Actively support us. Um, go to our pride marches, um, go to our protests, go to our trans pride marches, show your support, be really active, um, share queer stuff on your social media. Even just showing up and trying to gain some kind of understanding um, is so, so important. And in terms of trans kids as well, just being a safe space for them. So what does trans joy mean to you? There is that joy that comes from validation, from when people recognize you properly, ask you to do things and stuff like that. But, and sometimes it's just ridiculously little things. Mm. I used to work with a therapist and she, her statement to me was always, you, you, you've got to build up your library of those little sparkling moments that you can fall back on to just, you know, improve your mood whenever you need to. And Gender euphoria is trans joy. So when people use my pronouns, especially early on in my transition where I didn't really feel like I was passing well. Passing is like when you come across as the gender you are. 
when people would correctly gender me then, I'd be like, wow, oh my God, that's amazing. I want, I want more of that. <laughs> yeah, trans joy, I think, is kind of interlinked uh, into gender euphoria for me. Um, the two come hand in hand most of the time. Yeah. Um, similar to you, having trans relationships, like, mm -hmm. that's always great because on some level, regardless of whether, like, me and my partners are the same gender or not, but on some level they get it, mm -hmm. you know, and it's nice to be able to share those moments. And recently, I, I got top surgery recently, oh, so nice. being able to, like, Go in a swimming pool in just swimming trunks and go in a hot tub and all that kind of thing and just I finally look like what I've always wanted to look oh, like. I yeah, so that's that's trans joy for me. Yeah. Ev there's always there's there's always those moments uh, for me. Uh, I imagine for you as well, Maya. You you've, you've done your outfit to go out. You've done your makeup. You've done your hair, and you just catch yourself in the mirror, yeah. and it's just yes, that's me. Um, I actually get a lot of trans joy out of where I work, um, giving kids like gender affirming haircuts yeah. or not even just kids like we have you know 30 40 year olds coming in for their first like gender affirming haircut which is pretty pretty great yeah and you get like messages from their parents as well being like they've actually looked at themselves in the mirror and like they're happy for once if you could go back and tell a teenage you one thing what would it be i think i would tell myself to lean on my friends more like i wouldn't tell my friends how much i was going through um like as a queer person. So I think like if I got their support and if I, if I had told them that I was like going through stuff, mm. then that would make things a lot easier because I would kind of just like hang out with my friends or go to school and not like tell them anything about what I've been going through. Um, but they would have supported me if I had told them. Um, so I wish I did that. Yeah. Uh, I tell myself that it's gonna be all right. Yeah. Like you're gonna go through some stuff but it's it's all going to be okay and you are going to have the body that you want and the people like the friends that, that you want and that you need and maybe to ask for more help you know yeah um you will start to understand yourselves but or yourself but it may not happen right at like 14 you know yeah. you're gonna evolve and yeah you might go through some stuff but you'll get there i think i would tell myself to be a little bit more open with some of the people more close to me. Yeah. I think another thing I tell myself as well is don't be scared. Because I remember being mm. like scared of how I was feeling as I was coming out and like realizing a lot of things about myself. Um, yeah. Because I, at the time I didn't have the language to understand what, what it was. Um, so yeah, I'd say like, don't be scared. Yeah, that's, that's a really good one. It's, uh, don't be scared and look, it will get there eventually, you know, hang on to that one. Yeah. Yeah.